Did that trailer get you hot and bothered? Are you ready for some more hardcore sandstorm? Well, before we jump in and things get steamy, I'd like to thank our sponsor today, Manscaped. Manscaped provides quality products for you to handle your downstairs grooming and leaves you feeling fresh and ready to please. Right now, you can grab a free travel bag and free shipping when you purchase the Perfect Package 2.0. Also, if you use the code on screen, you can receive 20% off at checkout. Find out more and handle your business by hitting the link down below. Hello everyone, so we're going to be talking about some Insurgency Sandstorm news today. So, a lot of cool things. First off, free weekend from the 20th to the 24th of June, so make sure if you have not played Sandstorm, you haven't bought it or downloaded it, check it out on Steam. It will be free to download, free to play. Check it out, have a lot of fun, get some games in, and uh, you'll be able to decide if you want to buy it or not. Also, moving on, 1.3, the update for Sandstorm is live with this free weekend. We get a couple cool new weapons, we got a new game mode, and we got a new map, which we'll go into in a second here. And then later on into the video, we'll be going over the uh, roadmap and my impressions of the roadmap. A lot of cool information uh, about that stuff. I'll leave all the links to the official uh, blogs in the description down below so you guys can go through and read through all this information. There's a lot, a lot of cool stuff. But first off, what is new in 1.3 in addition to the free weekend? So first off, they're bringing back Ministry. Ministry was an Insurgency source, a great original map back from uh, the first Insurgency, and it's been remastered in the Unreal Engine 4, and it just looks beautiful. All the new lighting effects, um, the new texture uh, upgrades and everything, like Ministry looks so, so good in Unreal Engine 4, and I can't wait to get more games in on it. Um, so if you love the old Insurgency and you love that map, guess what? It's here in Sandstorm. Uh, moving on, they are adding a new arcade game mode, which is replacing Team Deathmatch for the time being. It's frenzy so frenzy is essentially like zombies it's a co-op versus ai game mode where uh, you're going up against ai that has like special abilities like one of them can blink around uh one of them will explode into fire when you kill them and one of them is like really tanky and there's a lot of cool fun moments you can have with these arcade game modes like i know it doesn't really go with the tactical hardcore shooter kind of vibe that insurgency sandstorm has but that's kind of the great thing it adds a lot of flavor to the game and, you know, they're supposed to be arcade game modes, so they're supposed to be here for a limited amount of time. It's like a fun little gimmick. But, I mean, <laughs> it adds a lot of life to the game. It, it Being able to play something different from the standard, like, uh, slow tactical pace within the same game is actually, like, a pretty strong uh, appeal for some players. And being able to have fun and just mess around with the AI and the funky uh, kind of mechanics that these new game modes have can be just a whole bunch of fun in and of itself. Uh, so go ahead and check out Frenzy. It was on the public test servers. Uh, remember to keep your eyes out for the public test servers because you do get to test these uh, game modes, these maps, and these weapons before they actually get pushed to the live server. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. They do actually have these public tests for you guys to get in there and help them test this stuff out. Uh, so, and now we're getting on to the cooler stuff, which is the new weapons. We have the Chinese QBZ-03 Assault Rifle and the Croatian VHS-2. Uh, both are pretty unique and pretty rare in video games. I don't really think we see these guns anywhere else except I think the QBZ was in um, one of the Battlefield games. So very cool to see these weapons. Uh, not very many games have these weapons in them, uh, at least to my knowledge. Uh, and then, of course, we get two cool new optics, the MRO, the Micro Red Dot for the Security Faction, and the One Times Mars for the Insurgent Faction. So you can see both the new weapons here as well as both the uh, new Red Dots. So very cool, or no optics. Um, they've added a whole bunch of optimization upgrades, so I know you guys are still having some issues running and pushing the game to 60 frames. Don't worry, they are slowly patching it, they are slowly improving the optimization. I am really, I really uh, have a lot of confidence in the New World team. When they say they'll do something, they're going to do it. It might take some time, uh, they might hit some uh, roadblocks, but the New World team is dedicated, they're determined. 
I don't know if I mentioned this before in the video, I did end up going to E3 last week, that's why the videos have been a little bit light, uh, but I did actually manage to hang out with uh, a couple awesome guys there. Uh, we met up with Michael Trujas at uh, E3, uh, we met up with Blue Drake 42 we met up with Big Fry, um, and then we also met up with Greg Wong, if you guys know who that is, that is the, uh, he's a huge airsoft dude, so go check out uh, Greg's channel as well, um, I'll try to leave that in the link down below, he's an awesome dude. Uh, hopefully he's going to get me into airsoft and you guys will see a whole bunch of that kind of content coming up soon, but, uh, really excited. Was very happy to meet these guys. A lot of fun. Uh, a lot of new user experience upgrades, uh, hit detection. That's very important. Getting, making sure that client and server validation is correct. And there is no like delay or anything funky going on there. Uh, as we all know, in shooters, hit detection is one of the most important things that the game needs to have, um, or at least like have well running. Um, next up is bug fixes. As you can see, like NWI has just been kicking ass like crunching through all these bugs um i know there was kind of a lull with the content and with the updates but hopefully uh it looks like they're getting back into a groove of things and they're pushing things forward so can't wait to see uh more content out of them soon and you're going to see what they have in store when we go over that roadmap and that roadmap i gotta say guys it's pretty exciting i mean We'll go through everything, but if you want to go through and read all these articles, uh, because there's a lot of information here and we're not even covering half of it, I'll leave a link to those articles in the description down below. Uh, gameplay uh, improvements, these are just balance changes to a lot of the recoil. Um, they doubled the gunship health uh, just because it was getting really easy to uh, shoot those out of the sky, especially with the new anti-material rifles. Um, and then hardcore checkpoint uh, change. They added more primary ammo for uh, players who respond, and they increased the speed of first-person hardcore sprinting animations. I know this was driving a couple of you nuts, like how the uh, hands was, the hand uh, animation and the actual running animation did not feel like they matched up. They're they're tweaking that, uh, and then a lot of AI improvements. I love how much work new world puts into their ai just so it's so nice not having like completely dumb ai to play against uh, having new and improved ai is always welcome and i'm always looking forward to ai updates uh they've had it they've added a lot of uh, levels changes as well and balancing changes um to keep you know all the spawn peaks and everything off so a lot of cool stuff uh but yeah um if you guys are looking to get in, this is the perfect time. July 20th to 24th, there will be a free weekend. Get in there. Check it out. I'm going to be covering it. I'm going to be streaming it. Um, so that's probably what we're, we're going to be streaming this Thursday. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this section of the video. Now we're going to roll into the uh, for what they have for the rest of 2019. And it's very interesting. Stay tuned. Enjoy. And uh, yeah, we'll jump right over there. All right, so we got the roadmap in front of us. But uh, I am going to pull up a bigger and large version of the actual uh, roadmap screen for you guys right here so as you can see there are a couple things that are really really interesting coming for uh this year uh, for 2019 so from july to about december this is what they're hoping that they can release an update and uh, push out to the public so first off two new snow maps um one of them is a rework of i believe this is sinjar which is uh an old insurgency map that they've now recovered with snow and i think it absolutely looks amazing and just this one screenshot i think it's cool and it's cool to also see a snow biome that's something that we don't have in sandstorm yet uh so adding more variety between the maps i think is always a good idea for you know more dynamic gameplay and more replayability um just adding more maps in general always good for a game in most cases uh, next thing uh, is that we are going to be having some PvP, Frontline, and Co-op Outpost modes added into the game. I think this is great because just like the maps, more game modes gives players more options and more reasons to play the game. Uh, I think I kind of had this little issue with Sandstorm over the past couple months where, you know, the maps were the same, the modes were the same, the objectives on the certain game modes on the certain maps were all the same. So there was a lot of... Mm, I would say you're repeating a lot of the same kind of modes and matches these days there's not too much difference in uh you know that dynamic gameplay that i'm looking for between sandstorm rounds it's very much the same map and the same strategy for most cap points over and over and over again so i'm more than happy to see more frontline and more co-op uh, outpost modes like just more game modes into the game i also think that they should have some some kind of variability between certain game modes and like if for example if you play push on um hideout or something it's it changes the cap points you 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 don't know what cap points you're going to be going into that one uh mode for for that one map so having some kind of variabilities maybe some some essence of uh 
some kind of randomness, I think, would be great. Some RNG in there to just help freshen things up th uh, throughout matches and in between matches, I think, would be a great addition to Sandstorm. But, of course, as we all know, randomness is very hard to code into a game and very hard to manage, make sure uh, things are balanced and stuff like that. So we'll see how that goes. You see uh, Squad recently just released their randomized AAS and stuff like that. So you can kind of see that is where the direction of things are going for most shooters as far as, like, adding more to the replayability. Random is a big, big factor in my opinion. Next thing is something that you guys have been asking for for a long time, which is the night versions of maps, which is actually really, really cool because uh, with the night versions of maps, you're, you know we're going to be seeing different kinds of night vision. So it's going to be a really more immersive kind of spec ops feel to these uh, to these rounds. You're going to see those tracers flying through the air. It's going to be really fun, and especially I think some of the co-op modes on the night versions of maps, you're really going to be able to like get into it and like just immerse yourself completely. So I'm really happy to see that night versions of maps are coming, just like the stone versions, more variations, more replayability. Then uh, this is something that we uh, we kind of already knew was coming, which is new weapons and upgrades. Um, NWI has kind of said that they are going to continue pushing new content as far as weapons and uh, attachment types. So that will be coming as far as from now till the end of the year. They are planning on releasing more weapons and more content. For here, they've uh, kind of teased the Tavor 7 and the AS Val, which are really interesting guns. I like how they're not going for all these standard kind of rifles and stuff like that. They're reaching out and trying to grab uh, a little bit more obscure weaponry. So I'm really, really happy to see that these new toys that, you know, some of us might not have been able to play in other video games. They've also, uh, this is one of the biggest things that I'm looking at this roadmap and I'm like really hyped for is toggleable optics. What this means is that when you use like a two times or a var variable zoom uh, site or site that has, you know, irons on top of it, like I believe the Elcan does, the uh, you're going to be able to toggle between those. So if you're using a two times magnifier on a red dot, uh, hollow or, um, you know, otherwise, you're going to be able to snap that magnifier off and switch from two times down to one times. And I think that's that's going to need a little bit of balancing because I feel like those two times uh, magnified optics are going to become one of the best optics in the game because you're going to have that variability and, and, and that adaptability for every situation. But toggleable optics is something that I really, really want. I think Escape from Tarkov is one of the only games right now that does it well. So really cool to see that. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is foregrip types. They're going to have different types of foregrips that alter the way you hold your weapon and uh, alter uh, the responsiveness of certain things uh, about the weapon. So I think that's really cool that it's not just a plus or minus to a stat. It's actually going to be affecting like how you're holding the rifle and how you can manipulate that rifle. Uh, faster reloads with the Magpul magazines and stuff like that. So that's all cool stuff. But once again, toggleable optics, one of the most uh, important impactful changes I think that Sandstorm can actually put into their game right now. Now, this one also has me really, really hyped, is the hardcore rule set. So a couple of you guys know that Blue Drake and I, you know, we were messing around and kind of try to do a hardcore co-op kind of thing uh, a couple months back. And then we actually talked to NWI and they actually ended up creating a hardcore co-op mode, an official hardcore co-op mode, which, you know, uh, makes it much more difficult. It strips your HUD. It slows your movement speed. A lot of cool stuff. I think this uh, first hardcore checkpoint was a, you know, proof of concept or like, testing the waters but it looks like they're going to want to roll this out to more uh, game modes and i think that's absolutely amazing uh, sandstorm does a really good job of immersing you in these really small unit uh, situations where squad and postscript and, and, and these platoon wide games are great for like for the immersion on the tactics level and the strategy level across the platoon uh, sandstorm does an amazing job almost like rivaling escape from tarkov as far as far as how to get players immersed in on the small unit scale like squad to squad stuff and just small unit tactics i think it's absolutely great that they're looking to add hardcore to more modes simply because that mode is just i love that mode that i would play that mode uh for every single game type that they have right now just making things harder and slowing it down making it a true tactical shooter because even games like squad postscript them and hell let loose while they are like immersive and realistic they can't capture that that sense of of death and that 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 intensity that games like escape from tarkov or hardcore checkpoint can um just where everything just gets zoomed in and, and you're so uh hyper focused on what's immediately around you you don't really get that in squad and postscriptum simply because i think mainly the respawn mechanic uh squad and postscriptum if you die that's fine you wait a minute you come back in escape from tarkov actually does this really really well because you have an actual fear of dying in in uh escape from tarkov if you die you lose a whole bunch of stuff that gear fear that sense of of uh terror almost um really amplifies the intensity of certain firefights 
Uh, so I really think that if Sandstorm can capitalize this and really bring that feeling into uh, their standard game modes, somehow they'd have to figure out a way to do it. But Hardcore is in the right direction. Like to get that sense of, of fear and that sense of intensity, um, that's something that a few games can capture. I think the only games I've ever played that really do this for me is like the Hardcore Checkpoint when I'm playing with Blue Drake. Um, like he's just a great guy to like get you into the game. Like he he's, he's really... Uh, He's really good at amping up the game. And then uh, Escape from Tarkov because of the gear fear. And then I think also like Daisy kind of partially because of that gear fear as well. So with that fear, you you have like natural suppression. You know, games like Postscriptum, Hell at Loose, and, uh, and Squad, they have to add this... Uh, this artificial level of, of suppression because you there's no way you can replicate the feeling of like not wanting to die um, into a video game except you know like the way that Hell at Loose not Hell at Loose uh, Escape from Tarkov and uh, DayZ used to do it which is like your fear of losing all your stuff that fear creates natural organic suppression right when you're getting shot out in, in Escape from Tarkov you panic you're gonna lose your stuff you're gonna you're gonna um, you're gonna duck into cover like these are things that that are really essential to real world firefights that you can only get in certain games. So I think if uh, Sandstorm can really capitalize on this and make it, you know, a true organic kind of uh, fear, then that that's you know more power to them. It's going to be much more fun and one of the mo uh, one of the more unique games out there on the market. Um, another thing that's really important, like everything on this roadmap is fantastic news. Like everything on here, like seeing what they're going to be working on and what they're releasing. I'm so very happy. Uh, level editor and mod tools. You guys have been asking for the lev level editor for a while. Um, I know I know a couple communities that really want to get into making larger scale maps. Uh, a lot of the maps on Sandstorm right now are large, but they're kind of linear for that push kind of game mode. Like the level editor adds so many uh, potential routes for us to take as far as like what we can do with the game. And mod tools just in general, like We've already seen mod tools really affect games like Squad, even though Squad doesn't fully support mods right now. Um, the Star Wars mod that I'm going to be covering, the Starship Troopers mod, the Zombie mod. Like, mods add so much life into the game because mod creators can actually create things that are outside of the scope of the actual original game and create so many fun kind of... Uh, kind of opportunities and possibilities within the SDK. I mean, even looking at what you can do within the scope of the game, for example, squad, like someone had modded in the helicopters. Someone had created fully working helicopters and modded them into the game. And even like communities like mine, like squad ops, we were using those. Like mod tools are so powerful because you're essentially like, weaponizing the the mod creators and the community to create content for your own game so i'm very happy to see the level editor and mod tools because more content created more content for the audience your game just grows so i think it's an absolutely fantastic thing to uh, be working on and i hope this is one of their top priorities uh the last thing here i'm not really too excited about i mean it's still pretty fun um but out of everything here and it, I guess it's a good thing. I have everything here. This is the least exciting. New character customization. Uh, I know everyone loves collecting their um, cosmetics and kitting out their operators and their insurgents. So I really, really like how they're you know catering to everyone here. They're letting you choose what you want to put on. They're letting you collect more gear. And I think that that progression system and that ability to you know accumulate stuff, uh, it, it's a great like mechanic for for the game because you you feel like you're making progress on something and that's something a lot of shooters don't have like uh postscriptum squad hell at loose these immersive tactical shooters there's no real sense of progression whereas uh the character customization in sandstorm even though it's like such a such a subtle like minute form of progression it's it's cool to see that every game that you play has an impact on your account um i think that's that's something that's underutilized in a lot of games of course like we don't want to get too out of control like csgo or like uh pubg with all the weapon skins and all this crazy stuff but i think that the ability to change out your your gear on sandstorm fits the 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 character of the game so well and works so well that uh it it, it really feels at home it doesn't feel cheap and it doesn't feel like something gimmicky it, it, it makes sense and i think that's really cool but anyways, that's the roadmap for Insurgency Sandstorm. I'll leave a link to the full post in the description down below. There's a lot of cool stuff here that you guys need to read through and, and take a look at because, God, man, they, they're really pushing the game in the right direction. I know they're still, like, working on optimization. They're still working on getting out, it out onto console, and you guys are always asking me, Karmco, when's it coming to console? I don't know. Soon, hopefully. I think... I. I can't wait to see this game hit console because I know it's just going to explode because there's nothing on console that's like this this hardcore right now, at least not to my knowledge. I think that Sandstorm is really going to, I think, 
open the door for a lot of casual gamers to start getting into hardcore kind of tactical and realistic FPS games. And I'm hoping that there's a really big thing for the genre uh, because there's nothing on it on Xbox or on console uh, like this. So I'm really I'm really excited for Sandstorm. I know they have their work cut out for them. I have total um, confidence in the development team and in the company. All this stuff is coming for free. Like all this extra uh, content, it's not DLC. You don't have to pay for it. It's not expansion. It's all free. So like I love NWI. NWI does a great job of uh, organizing their team, motivating their team, and executing. They have stumbled recently just because of uh, you know optimization issues and getting it out to console. But I mean, if they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it. It might take some time, but they're going to do it, and they're going to do it for free, right? Like we're getting all this stuff for free. So I know you guys are upset that's not here yet, but it's coming. Be patient. Uh, a lot of cool stuff on the roadmap, and that's that's just for 2019 until like December. So like, hopefully all this stuff gets banged out, no problem. Um, a lot of cool stuff here. So go through and read it yourself. I'll leave a link once again in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and a special thanks to my channel members. If you enjoy my content and want to contribute, check out that blue join button down below. Also, just a heads up, if you're watching this video the same day it was uploaded, we're going to be live streaming on YouTube at 2, so drop in and say hi. If you're wondering where to buy Sandstorm, you can also pick up a copy at karmacut.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it, and I hope I see you in the next one.